Hi there guys, welcome to the Dutch Sheet Channel, thank you very much for tuning in for my first video about this here quadcopter from Diatone. It is their brand new F7 or the Roma F7, a 7 inch FV drone or quadcopter. And the strange or interesting thing about this quadcopter is that it wasn't promoted per se by Diatone. None of the reviewers got one sent for free. And I waited and I waited for proper videos on this quadcopter and they never <laughs> appeared. So I got me one uh, to, uh, well, uh, see what it's about and make a videos of. I'll make three videos. This video you're watching here has a detailed uh, unboxing, a show and tell if you will. And it's, a, it's an interesting quadcopter dish. Really un <laughs> unfortunate that Daito decided not to promote this. But um, yeah, this uh, well gives me the opportunity to uh, have one of the few proper videos on this quadcopter. Especially these motors. This quadcopter is a monster. Well, I haven't flown it, but this should be a monster. Yeah, enormous motors. Also a 1 watt or 1000 milliwatt VTX. I have the analog version here. There is obviously also a digital version. In this video, again, we're going to have a detailed look or also I want your input. What do you think of this here quadcopter? Especially because there are no review videos on this F7 yet. All right, let's get into it. Here we go. <laughs> you serious? And Hachi Day. There we have a box from yeah from Dietone, as you can see over here. Other than that, it's a pretty nondescript box. It does say Roma F7 over here, 6S, PMP. Other than that, not a whole lot. Oh, and it is a little bit squashed in transit. I have told Dietone that it might be a good idea to add a an outer box. It was wrapped in bubble wrap, as you probably know it, right? That's uh, how they usually ship things from China, some uh, plastic and stuff. But uh, yeah, maybe an outer box would have been nice, but a quadcopter can take a little bit of a beating. The quadcopter is actually fine. So let's have a look here what you get for your money. You get some documentation. Okay, parts list. Exploded view of the frame. And what else? Some more exploded views. So that's nice. If you want to work on your quadcopter, you've got the documentation and uh, parts list if you want to replace parts right after crashing your quadcopter around. That might be nice. So that looks great. Then you get uh, a USB cable. Yeah, so Dytone usually ships a USB cable to hook up um, the flight controller to your computer, right? So oftentimes I see people complain or have trouble um, updating the firmware or changing settings because they have a faulty or not the correct USB cable. So I guess that's why Daito ships their quadcopters with a USB cable. Other than that, I don't really, I'd, I'd rather have a second pair of propellers. So as per usual, Titan uh, ships their quadcopters with one set of propellers. In this case, bi-blades. That's unusual. Yeah, that's definitely one of the unusual parts about this quadcopter. And I'm anxious to see um, how that works out, of course. And we'll see that in the next video. But uh, yeah, again, bi-blades. Obviously you can use tri three blades on the quadcopter, but Titan thinks bi-blades would work best on this quadcopter. Okay, you got some cabling to hook up uh, the receiver. Mine should already have a receiver, right? I have the analog version with an RXSR receiver and you can uh, get uh, other receiver types in this quadcopter as well. Let me see, their own FRSky compatible receiver and no receiver. You can order the quadcopter without a receiver and a TBS crosswire, but you do get cables to hook up your own. Receiver. We got ourselves a care package. The usual kind of care package from the looks of it. So you got an anti skid pad and you got uh, antenna tubes, an FV antenna, all screws in the quadcopter you get spares of, and some other hardware. Okay, you've got a mount for a general purpose mount for a GoPro. 
and this is their new mount. Uh, the previous versions were white, I think. These ones are yellow, and these are less prone to breaking. Which is what I'm told, at least. Okay, you got a chain ring, and it's actually for this frequency chart. It's a plastic chart, and you can uh, hook that up to your keychain if you want to. Okay, we've got, um, what is this? Okay, a, a voucher code. Okay, and uh, hmm, well, I guess you now have a voucher code. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good luck with that. You got uh, more documentation. So here's the documentation for presumably the flight controller. You can download this documentation from their website as well, but here you can see how everything should be connected. Again, nice if you want to work on your quadcopter and the same for the 4-in-1 ESC. There you go. And one for the VTX. And this quadcopter actually has a VTX I've never used. They're Ultra 1000, which is a 1000 milliwatt or 1 watt. VTX should be great for penetration or range, right? And uh, okay, so documentation, thank you very much. And okay, so that's nice actually. As you can tell, the plastic parts on the quadcopter are uh, teal green, blue, teal green, blue, which actually does look nice. But if you don't like that, you also get all the plastic parts in gray. Uh, okay, so that's definitely nice. Or you can see them as spares. And this is a little bit different than usual for uh, Dayton quadcopters. Usually you get two straps. In this case you get four straps. And that's a good thing because on a 7 inch with bigger lipos you want to probably use two straps. And then you got still got two straps spare. Okay, and we got ourselves the quadcopter. Okay, so I'll get rid of the packaging. Hachikidei, there is our quadcopter, and I must say, I very much like this teal, green, blue color of the of the plastics. I might actually keep it. Ordinarily, I like my I like to black out these kinds of quadcopters, but definitely looks nice. I'm also glad to see that uh, the power leads come out the side over here and not at the rear. This way, it's much harder to have a the propeller strike your power leads. In general, I build my quadcopters like this, so I'm happy to see that. And uh, yeah, so the motor axles are protected uh, while shipping uh, with these uh, grommets, which is uh, nice to see. Then we've got stickers on all the four motors showing us uh, what the direction of the props will be. And nothing fancy here, they'll be spinning inwards general uh, setup or the normal beta flight setup and uh, I generally do this myself as well and uh, ooh, the motors uh, look fancy we'll have a uh, close look at those motors in a second because those are definitely one of the stars of this show uh, this this frame is obviously very much like their F7 and by now the F6 frames. Center section is more or less the same but longer arms. But these motors are absolutely massive. Again, a detailed look at the motors and their specs in a second. And okay, so we got these plastic parts which are also more or less the same I think as on the, the F5 and the F4. And yeah, these keep dirt, debris out of your stack. And it does make it a little less convenient to work on your beta flight configuration. But uh, yeah, okay, you can swing the door open like so and have access to your USB port. There are also all kinds of labels on the power leads. Don't burn down your house. And uh, okay, there's a label telling you uh, that uh, the CG is important, and it is. So if you run the quadcopter without a GoPro, you want to probably... Uh, put the LiPo dead center on your quadcopter to not burn out or overstress the rear motors or the front motors. If, however, you put a GoPro on it, well, just simply pick it up at the center and it should balance out. Right, again, so 
they uh, tell you to do that. And is there a label about... Uh... Okay, so if you're new to this, um, first of all, an, a 7 inch quadcopter might not be the, <laughs> the quadcopter of choice to begin with, but if you're adamant, uh, do uh, install your uh, VTX antenna before powering up your quadcopter. Otherwise you might burn out the VTX. And that's also one of the stars of the show, the 1000 milliwatt VTX. I've ne it's not a new VTX for Dytone, but I've never used it. Also, GPS antenna, and uh, in the flight video we'll see if that works out well, if we get a, uh, a fix right away or in a, uh, in a couple of minutes. And what is this? This is the Runcam Phoenix version 2 FV camera. Great, very, very nice uh, camera. Oh, by the way, I misspoke. I had intended to order the, the version with the RXSR receiver, but that one was out of stock. So I ended up ordering the one without receiver, as you can. Here's the cable where you can hook up uh, the receiver to. Mine does not have a receiver as of yet. And I'm not completely sure which kind of receiver I'll install. It doesn't really matter. Uh, again, this uh, quadcopter can be ordered with all kinds of receivers. And when I ordered it, it was pretty new. And well, the ones with receivers were out of stock. What more can I tell you about this uh, quadcopter? Uh, dimensions. Is this a true X or maybe a squashed? Let's see. The motor to motor length is 18, 18.8. 18.8. 18.8. .8. And the width is. Oh, much more. 22. Okay, so it's much wider. Then it is long and I'm assuming they did that uh, well for flight characteristics but also maybe to keep the, the props uh, out of view. We'll see in the flight video right? If you are considering this quadcopter you might want to see if the propellers are in view. I am actually assuming because it's no dead cat right? I'm assuming the props will be in view. Yeah keep that in mind. And ordinarily, if you want to capture an HD uh, video, you want to add a GoPro to the quadcopter, obviously. But if you go for the for the DJI digital version, the DVR already looks reasonable, right? But again, you will probably end up with propellers in view. Okay, and the bottom of this frame, this quadcopter, again, it very much looks like uh, the F5. Uh, separate arms, obviously. It looks uh, very beefy. It also feels very beefy. Yeah, I can. Well, it's it's very hard to bend this frame at all. It definitely looks and feels beefy. Separate arms again, and Roma embossed over here, and nothing out of the ordinary. The, uh, the strange thing here is these zip ties. You've got these um, motor wire guards on the arms, as most companies now use, but also zip ties. I'm not sure. What are those zip ties for? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and okay, so these motors, right? Actually, uh, this is at this moment uh, my third 7 inch quadcopter, and I recently built uh, this quadcopter, and uh, actually has the same stack. Which is nice. Uh, other than that, this is a, a Rotorama frame and again a Daito slash Mamba stack and a DJI setup. And these motors, this is definitely a high power fast quadcopter, but these motors are 2806. Right? 2806. Keep that in mind. This is also a 7 inch quadcopter self built uh, from uh, iFlight components. This is a dead cat, as you can tell. And this quadcopter also has 2806 motors. And this is also a fast, powerful quadcopter. Right? Now let's get back to the Diatone F7. This lovely little quadcopter has 2808 motors. So not 2806, but 2808. And you might think, well, what's the difference? Six, eight, huh? Not that much of a difference. Well, that's until you calculate the stator volume. In case you don't know, the, the volume of the stator, the part of the motor that's copper-like, 
looks copper-like, the stator, the innards of the motors, that's the, what the 2808 indicates, that's the size of your stator, and the volume of your stator determines the power or the torque of your motor. So, 2806 for those other 7 inch quadcopters, 2808 for this F7, that's a difference of 28 in the stator volume. I'll put the ma math on screen for you. A difference of 28. And you might still think, yeah, okay, 28, well, uh, yeah, and? <laughs> but that's a difference of 33 or one third of the motor size bigger. So these are 33% bigger or have a 33% bigger stator volume. Therefore, these motors should be far more powerful. Not like twice as powerful, but 30%. That's nothing to sniff at. They will also be a little bit heavier, like maybe 30%. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so that might make it harder to chew this cock doctor. We'll see, right? And if I haven't mentioned that before, I'll be doing three videos on this quadcopter. This video, the show and tell, one flights video in which I uh, line of sight flight and FPV flight, box stock. And my third video, I'll present you with a tune, a proper tune for this quadcopter with this lipo or these lipos. These are the kind of lipos I'll be uh, using on this quadcopter. CNHL 1800. 120C 6S LiPos. Yeah, so this quadcopter can definitely be flown on the bigger LiPos, like 2200 or even 2400, or maybe even on a lithium ion pack. But I want to keep it lively, sporty. Um, so yeah, I, I went for a, an 1800, and these are the LiPos I fly all my 7 inch quadcopters on. So that also means that my tune will be for this, this kind of lipo. All right, that was a first look at this Roma F7 from Diatone. And again, I'd like to uh, hear what you think of this quadcopter. You might have actually be, uh, come across this quadcopter on the Diatone site and thought, yeah, so this looks like the Roma F5 with uh, slightly longer arms and maybe bigger motors and that's it. Okay, next quadcopter, please. Yeah, but nevertheless, Enormous motors, a powerful VTX, and that stack. Again, this stack is exactly the same as I used on my uh, self-built quadcopter. So, uh, in a 65 amp ESC, uh, that's more than usual, right? Usually you find uh, not the, the top spec components in ready-to-fly quadcopters. But in this quadcopter, in this case, you do find top spec components uh, in this ready-to-fly. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to flying this quadcopter. First of all, big motors, bi-blades, what does that uh, fly like? And uh, yeah, okay, so the FPV camera, I have no doubts about, that'll be fine. That VTX, we will see. And uh, we will see soon enough, because I'll be making this quadcopter flight ready, I'll add my receiver, and uh, probably add some uh, flight modes that I like. Other than that, again, we'll be flying it box stock, and that'll be the next video. Again, let me know what you think of this quadcopter. Until my next video, thank you very much for watching, bye bye.